New here this morning, my name is Adam, I'm the pastor. It's so uh, good to have you worshiping with us uh, this morning. We are starting a new series. We're calling Second Priority. It's about the family. We're also going into these marriage small groups. There's also many other small groups that are going to be offered during this uh, fall small group season. I just want to encourage everybody who's here, I'm going to do it again, again at the end, but everybody's here this morning to go back in the back after service and find a small group. If you are married, though, if you are married, get back into a marriage small group. You know, one thing that I believe in the Lord laid on my heart beginning of the year is that God was going to heal some marriage relationships in this season. And for those that, you know, you feel like, okay, my marriage is really, really good right now, uh, this is what I encourage you to do. Man, it can get even better. Yeah? Our marriage relationships can get even better than if they're even in a good spot. And so get involved with a marriage small group. I know it's going to be a powerful, powerful season in those groups. Who's going, to get a, who's going to join a group after service today? Come on, someone. All right. So as I said, we're in a series, Second Priority. We're talking about the family. So as you can put two and two together, our second priority is our family. Our third priority is ministry. Our fourth priority is our job. Can anybody guess what our first priority is, though? It's God. It's God. So this is what we're talking about this morning, putting God first, that we would make God our first priority in everything that we do. And then what happens when we make God first priority is that everything kind of falls into line, falls into place, and these dominoes begin to happen. Let's read this together. This is our text for today. Matthew 6, verse 31 through 34. It says this. Therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? All, all these things. Say all these things. All these things. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, not, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. I've entitled my message this morning, even figured it out, Make God First Priority. Make God First Priority. If you like my notes, you can text notes to the numbers on the screen. What I have in front of me will be in front of you. Let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit into this place. Holy Spirit, we know that you're already here. But Lord, I pray that you would illuminate our hearts to what you want to speak to us, what you want to say to us today. Lord, forgive us when we haven't made you first priority in our life. Lord, we're not going to put you in a box. We're not going to put you as just a Sunday morning thing or a Wednesday night thing. But Lord, in everything, in all things, God, may we make you first priority, Jesus. So, Father, I just pray this morning that, God, we would get ourselves out of the way, that, God, you would open our eyes to show us the areas. Father, we may not have made you first. Lord, we're all there, even including myself, God. We've, we all struggle with this, Jesus. But I pray that today, God, in everything, in all things, Father, that we would truly make you first priority. Lord, we love you. God, we ask you to speak for your servants are listening today. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. I have a question for you this morning. What motto or mantra do you live by? What motto or mantra do you live by? For many people right now, there's an anthem out. That is the number one song in the U.S., Richmond, north of Richmond. That is probably an anthem for many people. It's a motto that many people are living by. Now, a couple of years ago, there was a motto that people said, YOLO. You know what I'm talking about? What does it stand for? You only live once. It was an excuse to kind of do whatever you wanted to do, anytime you wanted to do it, and didn't care about the consequences at all because you're going to live for today and for this moment. So YOLO, you only live once. 
Some other phrases that have popped up as mottos and mantras are carpe, carpe diem, which means what? Seize the day. Seize the day. There was a popular TV show not long ago uh, that became a motto or mantra for many people that they would say of be a goldfish. You got to be a goldfish. What was that? It was to forget about what the circumstances were, forget about what happened in the past and just keep moving forward. Don't worry about what happened. Forget about it. Just keep going. In many Christian circles, there was a motto, a mantra uh, that many of you still wear the bracelet today. WWJD, what would Jesus do? I like that one. That's a really good one. It's a good motto to live by. What would Jesus do in the situation? Although this thing I'm facing right now, I've got to ask God, what would he do? There's another one that's out that many people say, and it is, um, uh, think about today, right? So uh, don't take one day at a time, that's it, one day at a time, right? So in football season, we'll say one game at a time, one day at a time. And Jesus was really saying this in Matthew chapter 6, which we read earlier, that, hey, don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. Or I'm going to take care of the day. Just, just trust me that today I'm going to provide for you and all your needs. Don't worry about tomorrow. In the same scripture, though, what does Jesus say? He says, seek first the kingdom of God. And what? His righteousness. So what are we to do? We're to seek first the kingdom of God, that we would make God our first priority. So I would like to add a motto or mantra that really we should be living by. And in, you might be saying, Adam, that's not very uh, good. But MGFP, I'm going to try this morning, just so you get in your memory. MGFP, what does it stand for? Make God your first priority. That you would MGFP in your life, that you would make God your first priority. I can see it on bracelets. I can see it on T-shirts. I can see it on hats. So maybe not. It's not that great. But you would make God your first priority in your life. So that in this series, as we're approaching it, that every single message that we would look at it in the lens of, Lord, I want to make you first priority in all things. Say all things. That we're going to make God first priority in all things. It says this in Romans or Colossians. Colossians 1.16, for by him, this is talking about God, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Say this next part with me. All things were created through him and for him. So that when I'm thinking about myself and who I am, I look at it in the lens of I was created for God's good pleasure. I was created for him. I was created to do good works for him. And when I make him first priority in my life, everything else just kind of falls into place and falls into line. Romans 11 puts it a little differently. And what's happening is Paul is dropping some incredible truths in Romans 11. And then all of a sudden, he just kind of takes a praise break and and he says this. He says, oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. Verse 34, for who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? Listen, there is nothing that we could do to earn the favor of God. It's only when we submit to God and we make him first priority in our life. Verse 36, for him and through him and to him are what? All things. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. In other words, for my first priority to be God, I must understand that I was created on purpose and for a purpose. You have to listen to me this morning. Many of you right now are doubting that you were created on purpose. You have something where you're struggling with right now 
and you're battling and you feel like the enemy is just against you and you're doubting that you were created on purpose. Listen to me, you were created on purpose and for a purpose. And the lie of the enemy is that you weren't created on purpose. Everyone in this room has a purpose and a plan and God made you perfectly. He knew you before you were even born. You were created on purpose and what? For a purpose. In other words, to make God first priority in your life is to realize that my life is a gift from God And everything I am and everything I have is by the grace of God. So I want to encourage you this morning. We just get one life. We just get one opportunity. And one thing that I've learned in being a a lead pastor now for just a year is that really how fragile life really is. I've had more opportunities to do funerals, to visit hospitals more on a regular basis and it's just this realization in my life over the past year just how fragile life really is and that you were created on purpose and for purpose and that you wouldn't live your life just for yourself but you would live life for what for God and as you live life for God you will begin to realize your purpose and the plan that you have for your life and so this is what I want to do this morning As you make God, MGFP, as you make God first priority in your life, as you begin to make God your first priority, there are many dominoes that fall into place as you do that. But what I want to do this morning is I want to give you three dominoes that fall into place as you make God your first priority. So the first domino that falls into place when making God your first priority is this. Plans will take care of themselves. Isn't that good to know that as you make God first priority, you don't have to worry about tomorrow because God's going to take care of today? That plans will take care of themselves? And notice this isn't my plans. This isn't your plans. We make plans. Our plans are not God's plans, and they'll fail every time. But when we do make God our first priority, his plans will what? They'll work out. Proverbs 3 says this, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Well, what would that look like in your life? Maybe you're, you, have a, you have a meeting with a client and you're telling God as you're about to have this meeting with a client, you're like, Lord, I want to I land this client, but Lord, above everything else right now, I just want you to use me for their good, for their well-being. That Lord, whatever your will is in this meeting, Lord, I pray that God, you would just create a way. That Lord, I wouldn't get ahead of myself, but Lord, I would submit everything to you and Lord, you would have your will and your way in this meeting right now. And I guarantee you that meeting with that client is going to go a little differently. May we make God first priority in what? All things. In your marriage relationships, may you make God first priority. In your relationship with your kids, may you make God first priority. In your job, may you make God first priority. In everything, in all things that you would Make God first priority. So what do we do? We acknowledge God in all of his ways. And what he, he will do is he will make your path straight. That should give you a lot of comfort and peace knowing that when you trust in the Lord with all your heart, you don't lean on your understanding, and you acknowledge him in all your ways that he will make your path straight. And so what's happening right now, though, is many people in this room You're on the crooked path, and you're like, I don't know how I got on this crooked path right now. And the proverb writer is saying, I know how you got on this crooked path. You didn't start out with God being first. This is really simple, y'all. This is 
really basic, but this is something that we have to get in our life. You didn't make God first. And what God is saying is before you start any path, before you start any business venture, that you would make God first priority. Before expanding your family, maybe some of you are expanding your family this year, that you would make God first priority. Maybe you're heading back to get a degree, you're moving to a new city, you've been elevated to a new role at your job, that you would make God first priority. Maybe for some of us in this room, you're reaching towards a prize. And here's the thing, that we should be reaching towards a prize. You might be saying, Adam, well, ah, we shouldn't be reaching towards a prize because we should be low and humble. But listen, God said, run the race in such a way that you will what? You will receive the prize. Run the race in such a way that you will receive the prize. You were created on purpose and for a purpose. And God is not a kingdom where it's mediocre. He's a kingdom of excellence. He's a kingdom of greatness. And he's calling you to do, be the best you can possibly be at what he's calling you to do. And so as you make God first priority, you don't have to strive and try to do it. He just does it for you. You can take great comfort when you make God first priority. Tap someone on the the shoulder right now next to you, give them a little elbow and say, make God first priority. Come on, tell them, make God first priority. So the first domino that falls in place if we make him first priority is all things will take care of themselves. The second domino that falls into place when making God First priority is this. Number two, this morning when making God first priority, fears will not dominate your mind. Fears will not dominate your mind. That's really good to know. So when I'm letting anything or anybody, any circumstance dominate my life in fear, it's because I did not make God first priority. It's getting real. When you allow fear to come in your life, it's because you are not making God first priority. It's a a telltale sign. I'm not making God first priority because right now I feel fear. I feel anxiety. Let me put it this way. Listen to this. If I'm paralyzed by fear, somebody or something other than God is first. If you were paralyzed with fear, somebody or something in your life is first. We've all been there. I've been there before. If I feel fear and anxiety come in my life, it's because I haven't made him first. 1 Peter 5, 6 puts it like this. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Other translations Put it this way, so that he may lift you up. Do you realize that when you humble yourself before the God, when you learn to fully surrender every aspect of your life to him, that he's going to lift you up? What oftentimes is we'll try to surrender one part of our life to him, and we're good about surrendering this part of our life to him, but then this other part of our life we haven't really given over to him yet. We'll surrender a Sunday morning to him, but then the rest of the week, we'll live like we want to. We'll have one box over here where we've made God first priority, but then over here in another category, another box, we haven't really made him first priority. That we would be people who humble ourselves in every aspect of our life and every thing that we do and everything that we are, that we would humble ourselves before him, that we would truly surrender it all to him. And then what happens is what? In due time, maybe not on our own time, we have to be patient sometimes, but he will what? He will lift us up. Oftentimes, don't we all, including myself, don't we all try to lift ourselves up? We try to do it on our own. Y'all, it is exhausting doing that. If you're wondering why you're tired, you're worn out, It's because you are trying to lift yourself up instead of just humbly submitting before God and allowing him to do it. So may we humbly submit before God and then allow him to lift us up. Verse 7 says this, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You see, you can cast all of your fear 
all of your anxieties on him because God cares for you. Some of you in this room have to know that, that God cares for you. He truly cares for you. He's thought about you. Like he even knows when the sparrow falls. Like he knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows about you. He cares for you. Casting all anxieties on him because he cares for you. So when the odds are stacked and there's reason to fear, there might be some obstacle in your path, the main thing that can give us the power to change the story is to put God first, to put him first in everything. And you might be saying, well, Adam, how, how, how does that work? I think about the story of King David. He was a man in the shepherd field. He was humbled. And as he walked into the valley of Elah, to defeat Goliath. Everybody around him was like, David, you're, you're crazy. Why are you even going to try to do this? And even in trying to defeat Goliath, they told him, hey, you got to put on some armor. Here's a sword. And, and David's like, no, I'm just going to be myself. I'm good with this slingshot. I'm going to go grab five stones. Maybe you know the story. I'm going to grab five stones, and I'm going to defeat Goliath. What everybody knew that day is what Goliath's reputation was. His reputation is that he crushed people, absolutely crushed men. But, God knew the repu- uh, but David knew the reputation of his God, that God was faithful, that God was going to pull him through. And so he grabbed those five stones and he went up against Goliath and he won the victory. And here's the thing with it today. I want to encourage you that no matter what obstacle is in your life, if you make God first priority, you will learn that in your life he is faithful. You will learn that he is faithful and he will will give you the victory if you make him first priority. But you can't try to do it on yourself. You gotta do it and submit fully all of it to Jesus. It's so hard to learn sometimes (laughs) that we would be people who MGFP, that we would make God first priority in our lives. You might say, oh my goodness, man, like this, I should be afraid of this circumstance. But just start with God and say, Lord, I know you're going to give me the victory. And here's the thing. There's hundreds of verses in scripture about fear. One, people will say there's a scripture about fear for every day of the year. Every day of the year. It's because God knew that left up to ourselves, we would try to do things on our own. And when we try to do things on our own, we don't make him first priority in what, all things? that we're going to be captivated by fear, but may we make God our first priority. And anxiousness and fear can go away. So the last domino that falls right behind when we make God our first priority is this, number three, when making God first priority, you can expect God to come through. When making God first priority, you can expect him to come through. That does not mean that if you make God first priority, you won't have any problems or any troubles in life. It just means that if you do have problems and troubles in your life, God will override them. He will supersede them. And he will use them in his plan for his glory and your good. And you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living as you make him your first priority. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this. For we walk by faith. We walk by faith and not what? Not by sight. If there is ever a time in history for the people of God to begin to walk by faith and not by sight, it is now. God has called us to do good works and sometimes those things that are big are so huge and beyond our own abilities and that's why God has put them in front of us. On our, on our elders chat, Sometimes I'll, I'll raise a, a need of something we're praying through. And I'm telling you what, Clarence Tillman, every single time that there's an obstacle that seems like it's too big, he'll immediately say, my God's big enough. Don't you guys doubt for a moment, God can come through. Listen, we don't walk 
by sight. What do we walk by? We walk by faith, knowing that God can do the impossible, knowing that circumstances that might be visible in front of us may be real. But can we tell you what else is real? It is the Holy Spirit. Can we tell you what else is real? It is God. Can we tell you what else is real? It is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what is real is that God is big enough that no matter what circumstance that we might be facing in our life, that we can walk by faith, not by sight, because God is going to come through. Because what is real is Jesus. What is real is how much he loves you and cares for you and is with you. Just like we sang earlier, that uh, Waymaker, he's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He is a way maker where there seems to be no way. And so in life, and in every circumstance, and throughout this series, in this fall, it is vitally important that we as individuals and we as a church, and we always, not just this fall, but always, that we would MGFP. <laughs> not a great acronym, but I'm going to use it. MGFP, that we would make God our first priority. We make him our first priority. Would you rise with me all over this room? I want to pray for you that you would make God your first priority. Then we'll go into a time of communion.